So as version 4.2 is winding down, with over a week until 4.3, before I start moving my content onto the upcoming characters and patch, I thought I'd just do a brief overview on my final thoughts on Farina since she released on the 8th last month. So we've had a whole month of testing and building her. First of all, before getting into that, I can show you my Farina build and how I've been progressing. Um, pretty pleased with this build overall. I didn't feel the need to get her signature weapon or any constellations on her. So I've just been sticking with Festering Desire. This is because, to be honest, I'm quite enjoying trying to extract as much power as I can with the tools I have. And a lot of the teams I play, you actually don't care about her signature weapon until you get to much higher costs. And you can actually see that in the speedrun analysis sheet I made in my last video. Not many runs here actually prioritize her signature weapon. And that's another thing altogether. Like I take for example, a very prized team like this or this. Actually, when Farina is doing all these vapes, the key is actually as strong, if not even very slightly better than her own signature weapon. And you're also getting EM buffs to your team. So even if I want to use a five star weapon for a video, I can use this instead. And of course, the key is a lot more universal, can be used on Nilu, Shinobu. Now, as for our constellations, these are pretty strong. And as we know, a lot of teams do pick up her C2 for early optimization. So we know these are very strong, and this is something I could pick up in the future, but. For now, I'm happy to save my primos. These are my artifacts I'm using at the moment. Here's my pieces. I actually managed to get this circlet yesterday. It's got a lot of useful subsets here. And I think adding these all up, I've got roughly 39 useful substats out of a possible 45. So that's 39 if you include the elemental mastery roles here and here. And you play her in a reaction team. So overall, I'm quite happy with this build. I know I got pretty lucky here. So looking back, there were some teams I got right and some teams I got wrong, which is totally fine, specifically about this video. And I don't know how much Farina is going to end up buffing him, but it might be a case where Nervilet's personal damage actually gets lower in these new teams. But the plan is to make it up with Farina's sub DPS damage, which probably might be an overall upgrade for a lot of situations, but it might not be an upgrade if your Nervilet is well invested at low cost. So in regards to Nervilet, I did get it right that Farina isn't always an upgrade for him just because it's not easy to do wholesale changes in a team and his vape teams were already pretty good. Losing a stack of his talent at C0 by playing a double hydro team does cancel out a lot of the benefits Farina brings. But what I did underestimate is the team building part and actually you don't need to do wholesale changes. In fact, what we quickly realized, and you can see this in my previous videos sheet as well, is that you actually can just slot Farina into his teams and you don't need to really mess around with wholesale changes and fit in unsynergistic healers. Like Farina can easily just replace Xiongling, which is a very popular option this team, or she can replace Zhongli. And Nervilet can actually self-heal quite a lot especially because his healing does actually stack with Verena's team buffs to incoming healing. Overall, for Hu Tao teams, as I said, whilst I wouldn't be surprised if Verena does come in and changes the game in regards to double hydro teams, I do think there is a chance that these new teams could still fall behind the old Bennett Carswell teams at certain levels of investment. And then for Hu Tao, I think this video did age very well. A lot of Hu Tao players and content creators are sticking to their old teams, like a VV Vape team like this or this. The Hu Tao Farina teams are good, they're just not the strongest for many accounts, which I did predict, and and even then, if you're playing Farina, you're likely to lose out on quality of life utility, like a shielder, or a grouper, or even just interrupt resistance if you're not playing Shinsho. Playing Farina, at least at the moment, is just not a worthwhile trade-off for a lot of people. So moving on to a wider team analysis, I think the situations where Farina has shined the best is where she just slots in directly with basically no gameplay change, like a team that was already playing a double hydro with a healer, so slotting in Farina is basically a direct upgrade. And I think two great examples of that is Kokomi monohydro type teams and Raiden double hydro with gene teams. So the good thing about these Kokomi teams is although it's not literally zero downsides by playing Farina, for example here you did replace Xingqiu's interrupt resistance, you can adjust these teams for your exact preference and need which is very nice. For example if you want interrupt resistance and you don't need grouping 
you can just use Xing Chou in this quad hydro team. If you want interrupt resistance and you want grouping, you can just slot cards over here. And if you don't care about interrupt resistance, but you want a bit higher damage, then you can play Yelan. Then another team is these ride and double hydro teams. This concept did used to be fairly popular, either with Xing Chou or with Kujo Sara. This concept was never the strongest riding team, but it was a very comfy and fun team to play. And since this team already had Yelan and Jean, Farina just slots in for pretty much a direct upgrade to the playstyle. I have checked the riding mains Reddit, and a lot of people have positive things to say about the team. And many people even believe this is potentially Raiden's strongest team now. And whilst personally, I disagree with those takes, especially with what I know from speedrunning, I can definitely see why people like it. In fact, I use this team a lot for domain farming. There's a lot of sustained sub DPS damage going on. So unlike a hyper carry team, you're not just relying on nuking with Raiden and then having potential downtime. It's also less circle impact without Bennett and also, it's really simple to play since with Jean C2, you get an attack speed buff to ride in, and that makes her optimal combo basically just spamming normal attacks. You don't need to worry about charge attacks, and it's very easy to play. Overall, I'm not surprised that both of these team concepts are pretty up there in usage rate surveys, and it shows that a lot of people are enjoying both of these playstyles. There is, of course, a bunch of other Farina teams I like, like forward vape teams with Klee or with Xiangling. If you want a full analysis, you can watch my previous Klee Rena videos, but I'm quite happy with the amount of damage Farina can do in these teams and the quality of life she can bring in, like how she is similar to Xiangling in that you don't need to do normal attacks or anything specific for her pets to hit and they also move and teleport to enemies. As you know, Farina Bennett also has very good synergy with someone like Klee since Klee's HP is generally pretty low, so she is easily able to be fully healed by Bennett, meaning you can quite frequently activate Farina's team-wide healing, which allows Farina's damage and her burst buff to be pretty consistent, even if you aren't consistently healing your teammates perfectly with Bennett. That's another conclusion about Farina, which is that I think a lot of people forget, but you don't actually need the team to be at 100% HP in order for her to do her job. As long as the team has been healed and she is draining HP, then she does her job. Remember that this skill damage checks for when teammates are able to lose HP, not if they are at full HP. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased that over time people have realised that, given the right team of course, that she actually works pretty well with Bennett. And also given the popularity of Nervilet teams with Zhongli, and even some popularity of Zhongli Hutao Farina, that Farina's need for a super strong team healer might have been a bit over exaggerated and overrated. There's also DPSs who I don't really play, but I'm really impressed with how Farina seems to be working with them. For example, Xiao, Eula, Noel. Like Xiao never really had a great fourth teammate. It always felt like he had a three-man team and just whichever fourth teammate works the best. But Farina almost slots in for basically free damage and free buffs. Her high skill duration suits him. She doesn't need to take any buff uptime away from Xiao. The pets can teleport as needed to work flexibly with him. And of course, she also synergizes with him losing HP. And you can even replace Bennett here with Jean, which seems to work great too. I've covered this twice now in videos, but I'll mention it again. And I really do like this tech that even speedrunners have been using it, which is you switch to Numa form, you use her E then burst and then you switch back and then you do the rest of your team's rotation. This gave her two ticks of healing and it doesn't take that much time, which is good for when you want to top her HP up a bit. And I definitely recommend learning this combo and learning when you want to use it or not. There's also more advanced techs like when to use her EQ and when to use her QE. I covered this briefly in my Clearina video, but depending on her position or the timing, like if you are skipping Cosworth's burst, you may want to do Farina Q then E in order to properly time a double swirl setup. There's also situations like when you want to use the key, because this works when you use her skill on field, you should always do E then Q anyway when you're using this just so you properly activate these buffs. I should also mention one negative thing is that her draining your team's HP can be uncomfortable for many people, especially with a lot of the harder enemies these days. If you aren't able to heal it off, then I think it's a perfectly valid issue that many people can have with her. And I'm sure you know, but this also can affect overworld gameplay, which is also a valid complaint. 
although it is a lot more casual. But throughout your playtime, her pets are constantly hitting enemies and all sorts of random things. So you're often just walking around with low HP on the team. And I can also definitely understand that her HP drain can be annoying in regards to that. So overall, I'm definitely happy with her and her performance. Even just her being a great teammate for Nervilet is a good thing for a lot of people given how popular and strong he is. Do I wish that she was a bit more better for like Nilu or Ayaka or as universal of a support as Kazuha? Sure, but you can't expect her to be so universal and work with everyone. I actually like that she's not a strict upgrade in a ton of teams. And to be honest, I do get the feeling that Hoyo did balance her to be really good in existing teams where she just slots into but also that i feel like farina is certainly designed to work with future characters and new teams too so we can't focus too much on trying to put her into existing teams anyway i know i didn't cover every single team but i didn't want to make this review too long i wanted to focus more on my experience and things i've learned if there are teams and tips you've learned about Farina in this month you've been playing her then I'll definitely be interested in reading those just leave a comment and yeah my next videos should be looking at upcoming content and characters so stay tuned for that. 